Hey guys, welcome. Welcome back to Interstage Window, our Saturday stream, which is a conversation between me and um, almost always Landon. Say hi, hi, Landon. Hi, Landon. Coming from you from my home now, but it's a different background. The walls are painted. Every single time Landon is on camera, <laughs> it's different. <laughs> I am a Sagittarius, therefore I am a world traveler which means mm. that I don't like to be confined to one space. Well, at least until that <laughs> space is well done, which this space is well on the way to being, so. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's crazy how much a different coat of paint um, makes such a huge difference. It's insane. Thumper! Sorry, I just saw them on the, in the chat. No, yes, welcome, the, Jed. Welcome, Thumper. The coat, the the entire room is now this beautiful green, and I'm like, oh, it's we're well on my way. The yeah, we'll talk about it in a second, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, first, um, Landon, what is it that we're going to be talking about today? We are going to be talking about applications in group RPs, what they're for, the different kinds of applications you'll come across, some ways to, we'll give some good tips on how to write good applications. And we're going to give some great tips uh, for mods and admin, especially to reading and helping your players succeed on their applications. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that's basically what we're going to be talking about for the most part. Yes, yes. So this is something that I've that I've covered on several spare room episodes, but um, I wanted us to have an opportunity to expand on it and also for y'all to hear um, a more different perspective than just mine, because I know the application process can be nerve wracking both from both from a player and a mod perspective. So that's what we're going to get into today. Um, but I want to I want to start out before I start the game um, for favorite things. I have something very special for you guys. Uh, I got my very first ever sponsorship. So thank you so much to Javi Coffee for sponsoring today's episode of Interstage Window. It's a coffee concentrate. So that's what this little guy is right here behind me. I'll show the camera right here. Um, Javi Coffee, coffee concentrate. Um, it's, it, I've already drank a bunch of it. I don't, I don't know. You can't really tell that on camera. I've already drank a bunch of it. Um, so I'm def <laughs> go ahead, Landon. Which means it must be delicious. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. Um, I, uh, I'm a coffee fiend. And, um, and I've been reached out to by sponsors before, but they've usually turned out to be like fake or scams or something like that. So I was very excited when the first one that I've gotten that seemed decent actually really was decent. Uh, it's good. Um, I actually made some coffee this morning with it right here. So that's what's in this red cup um, that I'm drinking some of the Javi coffee. Um, I, and, and because it's a concentrate, you can put however much in you want. They recommend one to two tablespoons in, in your drink. Uh, but I actually, since it's a second cup of coffee for the day, put in only half a tablespoon. <laughs> so um, there we go. Oh, uh, thank you, Jed. I will fix that right now. All that in a hashtag sponsored. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, L always looking out for me. I appreciate that. All right, that's all fixed. Um, so I would say as far as this, this product goes, um, I would say I, I would get it again, you know, but what I probably would really use it for is to make like coffee desserts and things of that nature, because it's way easier if you've ever made a coffee flavored dessert to use concentrate as opposed to actual coffee. So there you go with that. I was going to say a, a nice, awesome, like mocha or coffee martini. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm little thing for some coffee concentrate too for our over 21 year old listeners and watchers <laughs> uh, superior <laughs> yes it's those those are another thing that's like much better when you use concentrate instead of trying to do the recipe with coffee you just don't get very much coffee flavor so landon if you could please put the affiliate link into the chat for us if you don't mind um, if you guys are interested in getting some Javi coffee, if you click that, uh, full disclosure, I get a little bit of a kickback. So if you are interested, then please use that link. It will help support the show. I will um, be ordering some just to try that martini th theory. Just <laughs> <laughs> have you tried a coffee concentrate before any other coffee concentrates? I have, yes, but not necessarily of, of great quality um, and not to make a martini, mostly to bake. Yeah, I've I've gotten them before to bake too. So, coffee but is a milk. <laughs> any uh, coffee is a milk. You're not wrong. 
You're not <laughs> wrong. You're not wrong, Jed. Okay. So um, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get the game started. And uh, and while I do, Landon, tell us what your favorite thing is this week. I do have to say, I think my favorite thing is this office that is coming together. I have a uh, room in my house that uh, is a guest bedroom, but it uh, is a, it's, it's a wonderful space that I am finally making my own now that I am on summer vacation, uh, which means that I am taking care to provide an aesthetically pleasing background for you all to see, uh, since we're gonna be showing my face more and more every stream. Yes, <laughs> I'm so uh, excited for you. Thank you. I love it. We are trying to, the we, being the people inside my brain, uh, are going for a, if a library met a terrarium meets potion lab. So that is the, that is the aesthetic that we're going for. I don't know what that looks like to you, but to me, it looks like glass, green, and gold. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm here for it. Colorful potions. Uh, so that is, that's what we're really aiming for and it is i've i've created this one like karen and and the group got like uh, a whole bunch of spam yesterday from like me being like look at these things that i made and look at this one particular corner is is a, is a uh is acceptable now so <laughs> just saying that if there's anything specific you think my background needs i am I am taking suggestions uh, for design, especially since you guys will be seeing this more and more as we do more of these streams. I love that. I love that. And yes, I got um, DM spammed uh, yesterday as Landon was putting some of these things together and, and felt so inspired. Like it's making me think like, oh, I need to rearrange my office, right? Um, <laughs> I can't help myself. It just looks so good. It makes me think like I want to do some cool things in, in my space too. And Landon, I think you're going to love having a separate office from your bedroom, by the way. Um, so, uh, so yes, I, I'm really excited for you. And yes, Jed, I totally have Samantha on my list. Don't worry. Eventually, Samantha will be born. Landon is pregnant. However, we've got both a girl name and a boy name um, picked out from the list already. So Samantha will be potentially up next for the next pregnancy <sighs> yes oh hey katie how's it going yes it is sims katie! day <sighs> hello my love <laughs> um but now that we've done favorite things should we jump right into our topic yes we should so how do we want to get started today talking about rp group apps i think we should talk about the pros and cons of having an app in general. Okay. Um, what are the reasoning? What is considered an app? All of that before we dive into the actual different kinds of apps there are. Why is it necessary? Why isn't it necessary? Mm -hmm. uh, All right. I, so then, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I think the answer to that first question is that every single RP has an app and that's why it's necessary. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, matter, no matter what, uh, you are still asking your players to pick a character to think about that character and to play that character and even mm -hmm. if that's the basic, basic basic that's still an app <laughs> yep yep so even so when i think of that if something doesn't have an app then we're not talking about a group role play anymore we're talking about something that's like a drop in drop out role play or maybe it's a one-on-one -on -one situation right um but every single role play group that i have ever you know, ever seen, it has an app. Even if they're called appless, they have an app, right? Because <laughs> um, like Landon said, at some point you got to pick your character. And it's the same thing for like a tabletop game too. At some point you got to pick your character, you know, whether that's done at random, whether you make a character sheet, what have you. Um, at some point you pick your character and, and that's an app. Like no matter what else is going on, that is an app. Yeah. Um, and I think that we, we both agree and we'll go into the reasoning behind behind this um, later in the stream, but I think we both agree that we prefer to run RPs that have more information in their apps than an app list uh, RP or a or just a standard like, who are you playing and then go for it. Yep. Uh, we, so, we're pretty app heavy. 
<laughs> we are. We are pretty app heavy. So, I, but I want to give some attention to appless role plays. So I think um, we should probably talk a little bit about what an appless role play is first before we get too into the different types. Um, so when you see a role play that is that is uh, appless or advertised as appless, typically what you've got is a situation where um, everyone is accepted. So in appless role play, what they're really saying is that there isn't much of an approval process. If you fill out the app correctly, you get in and the app will be very short, very small, right? So the app will have something like the character's name, age, and like a few traits about that character. And that might be it and nothing else, right? It's so it's very hard to fill out the application wrong. So basically yeah. everyone gets accepted. Yeah, exactly. And I, I don't even think it's about that, like, everything gets accepted. It's just that there isn't a lot of requirement for upfront work, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Um, because you can have an RP, and we'll talk about this too, that is very app heavy that everyone gets accepted or you could. everybody gets accepted. Um, but it just might, the application is basically just requiring the you to do the amount of work of discovering your character and placing it in this world prior to actually starting writing mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and atlas and what atlas does is it basically just says here's your character and go forth yeah like it shouldn't take you more than five minutes to fill out a an a application for an atlas role play they're very short yeah no it, it's and we've seen it as short as like your name and your fc yeah. Um, and it can be and it can be as like intense as your name, FC, a little bit about your character. Like that, or not even a little bit about your character, your age, uh, and one line or whatever. Could be. I think that the idea of what Atlas does is it has this it has this like intention that everybody is going to get in no matter what. Uh, mm -hmm. that an application isn't an audition. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll talk about that a little bit because I am of the belief that applications aren't auditions inherently. Yeah. Uh, but some, some groups treat them that way. So, yeah, we don't. And we'll talk about why. Yeah. And so Applis is really sitting there and saying, this is not an application. This is just information for you claiming a character. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's one of the different types of applications that are out there. There is also a uh, bio applications. Yep. So you want to, do you want to explain what bio applications are? Yeah, sure. So bio applications kind of take it, um, the other direction, right? Instead of it just being a very short thing that the player completely fills out and that the mod team doesn't really care about or have a say on. A, a bio application is where the mod team has the most control over the player characters, right? So if you think about this in terms of a tabletop role-playing game, oh no, he got electrocuted. Uh, please don't die, Malcolm. Uh-oh. Well, I mean, we do need him dead if she's gonna be like the Black Widow of... Sin. I mean, eventually, uh-oh, oh, no. he started a fire. Uh-oh, uh, uh -oh. it's okay, they have a fire alarm, so the, the, the police will, the fire truck will come. Um, why don't you get you get your kid? Yeah, <laughs> get your kid away. <laughs> there we go. Good job, Malcolm. that <laughs> great parenting one hundred and one. Uh, okay. Okay. He's gonna try again. He's gonna try again to repair the computer. He. Oh my goodness. Aren't we rich enough to hire somebody to fix the computer? I. He, they really don't have. Here. They really don't have much money. They only have um a thousand simoleons. That trust fund ran out real fast. Yes, it did. They spent it all. <laughs> uh, building it. It's not even dream house, just building a house. Yep. <laughs> yep, yep. It's not even that great of a house yet. Okay, anyways, what was I saying? Bio, bio role plays. Okay, so bio role plays are where the mod team has the most control over the player's characters, right? So if you were thinking about this in terms of a tabletop role play game, you might, you might imagine a game where the DM creates a bunch of character sheets and says, hey friends, here's all the different characters, everybody pick one. Right. And that's basically what you're doing in a bio role play. So the mod team or the admin or whoever's responsible for it has written a bunch of histories or biographies 
about the different characters that they want in the role play. And then what players are going to do is they are going to kind of audition for these different roles. So this is where the idea of an application being an audition comes from, really is from bio role plays. It doesn't have to be that way. We're going to talk a little bit more about how like it really shouldn't be an audition. Um, but with a bio role play, basically you're, you're picking from a list of characters and you want to, as the player, show um, the, uh, you want to show the, the mod team that you are the right person to role play this particular character. That's what you're trying to do when you fill out a bio role play. You're trying to read the bio, you're trying to figure out from there like, okay, what does it seem like the mod team wants from this bio? And then in your application, display why you're going to write it that way. Yeah. And this can look like anything from um, expanding the bio that's pre-written to, uh, you know, doing some sort of introspection personality sort of thing. So if you have a bio that is events and what kind of character personality is attached mm -hmm. to that. Or I've seen also like a list of questions like yeah. it's like you know like for a Harry Potter role play since we're on the Harry Potter train we'll do that like they might have a bio and then in the application you have to say like um what kind of wand this this character would use what house were they in in school what did they see in the mirror of Erised etc 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 right so it might be something like that um to show that you that you have thought deeper than hey I connect to this bio let me just say I'm gonna do this like you're mm -hmm. putting in a little bit of work then also to the extreme of asking for writing samples and mm -hmm. we've seen this in plenty of ways writing samples that are in character as well as writing samples that are out of character they want to see what kind of rp -er you are your writing style so you might have to choose a character that you've previously played that might be close to the style that you're trying to write with this character or to show that you kind of become one with this character uh write a quick a quick one shot quote unquote or self para uh about this character's background at some point in their history mm -hmm. so they can see then how you're going to interpret these things that you say you're going to put in into this character that's already been pre-made yep yep and, and this is really oh sorry go ahead no go ahead um, I thought this, I think this is really like the only time where I'm kind of in favor of having a writing sample. Um, otherwise, I really don't think writing samples are useful for role play applications because again, it's not an audition. And I am of the belief that a self para, like writing, um, writing a passage by yourself is not the same as role playing. And you can't tell from reading like, you know, a couple paragraphs that somebody wrote if they're going to be a good role player or not. Like, I mean, you can't. It's just a different mode of writing. It's a different type of thing. Uh, you can't know. And so I really believe that the the only time that it's appropriate to do a writing sample in an application is when you've got a bio role play where the applicant has not written the whole history of the character. You've written a significant portion of that character's history as a mod team already. And you just want to make sure that the applicants connect with that particular character that you have gotten started that you already have ideas in your head of how you want that character to go right so this is the only type where i recommend like the mod team actually have um a writing sample request on the application yes i agree with that i, I we have seen rps that have mod that have writing sample requests um <laughs> like for different kinds of applications and not to serve this purpose again i think that those except for this particular showing that you have thought about this character and are and can write this character or how you're going to write this character i think how writing samples have been used is to prove that you're good enough yeah uh, or you're of standard uh to be in the group um, so I have, we've seen RPs, like I'm thinking of our once upon a time RP that happened that we asked people or not, not you and I, but the mod team there asked people to write, oh, to show that, you know, they are capable of the certain literary standard that we are looking for, which mm -hmm. is silly because you're absolutely right. A self para, a one shot is very, very different to back and forth RPing. Mm -hmm. um, 
people also don't know how long and how much effort someone took into making that. Yep. Um, when you be when you're able to control all of the things on the table, it's very very different than the ideas you might get when you're doing the co-writing that our piece comes with. Um, you don't have that necessary that improv. You you're making it all up in your head. Like yep. it is, they're very hard to compare, but yet in the RP community, they are compared. Mm -hmm. uh, so I agree with you. Writing samples, I think, are useful to show that you've done the work for a pre-made character. Uh, but I think that they're more successful. I think that you get more successful in, in as a mod team seeing people like adapting the bio or expanding upon the bio uh you get a more realistic sense of the character than you would with one shot yes which is part of why like we moved away from having bio role plays because the truth is you know there's more players in in the world than there are people that are going to be part of my mod team and so therefore this is the thing is no matter what myself and our mod team comes up with what the players come up with is always going to be better. And so we just stopped doing bio role plays because um, it just didn't make any sense. It just didn't make any sense for us to continue to do that. Oh, there we go. Landon's got her baby bump. Baby bump. I also think that she, uh, that we changed our piece too. When we're doing Harry Potter and when we were doing Marauders, the characters weren't ours. There were already mm -hmm. pre-made characters. We wanted a Lily. We wanted a Sirius. We wanted mm -hmm. a Lucius Malfoy. Um, and those characters have bios already written into them because there are things within canon that we know. And basically the way that we were writing RP was canon up until we started writing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, so those things still existed. You know, Lucius Malfoy was still a Malfoy who went to school and was a Slytherin. So there's a bio right there for you. Uh, but what we really did ask for was to expand upon it then. Uh, and as we moved away from Harry Potter and fandom and started doing more OC or not even OC, original con like original content for our RPs, uh, there wasn't there wasn't an excuse for that anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. you're right, there was more creative ideas done by other players than what our mob team could come up with. Yep. Now, that being said, there are definitely players that aren't going to want to make things from scratch. And so because we are aware of that and we don't we want those players to feel welcome and be able to join as well. Basically, what we move to instead of writing bios is we would write skeletons. Yeah. So um, I think we can talk a little bit about what a what a skeleton is. So when you've got a, a skeleton as far as your your type that you're running, what that means is that the mod team has written a little bit, just a little short blurb about the character, and you're expected to expand on that in a way that really fleshes them out, right? So the mod team might write like three sentences total about the character, and that's it. Um, or they might just have like the name, the age, the job, and that's it. So uh, you, you want to have something, when you're doing a skeleton, the whole goal is not to communicate necessarily what you're looking for, although you can do some of that. But the goal really is to inspire somebody who might join. I 110% agree. I also just need to comment how bad this couple is at playing catch. <laughs> They're not very athletic yet, but they both like fitness, I mean, so. <laughs> he's athletic. He's an athlete. I would just like to remind everybody that Malcolm is an athlete and didn't catch the ball once. That's all. Yeah, um, his fitness is still not that good. It could it could be better. So his his fitness skill is only two. <laughs> good athlete is what I'm hearing. Yes, um, that's right. Yeah, no, skeleton really takes the bio and then and breaks it down to its basic skeleton in order to inspire people. Um, I also think what it does is it, it gives a variety of characters the mods want to see as well. So it not mm -hmm. only inspires players who are coming in to write, but it also makes the opportunity to have fully fledged uh, diversity within the kind of character types that we are looking for to exist. So yep. if we feel that it's important to have a doctor in our town RP, we can put 
a skeleton of a town doctor. Yep. Uh, and that hints the fact that we need that. And also look if there's something pretty already made for you, but we're also not sold on this. So if you want to do a town doctor that's slightly different than this or very different than this, then you're welcome to do that too. Mm -hmm. um, I, those are those are like some of the useful things that skeletons also came into play and how you can utilize them as a mod team rather than just to inspire. They're also to help make sure that you have the variety of characters you want. Yes, absolutely. Um, um, and we've done this. We've done this for diversity in lots of ways, not just in diversity of jobs. But if we know that the role play is going to be stacked with like mostly white characters or mostly male characters or this way or that way or whatever, then we can say, OK, well, we need to make some skeletons of some lady characters or some skeletons of some characters that are of different ethnicities. Right. So um, so we'll do that as a as a way to kind of communicate to players like that we do want these diverse characters in the role play, even though there's not as many as we would like to see at the moment, right? Absolutely. And these are all optional, right? Like this applying for skeletons, when you run a skeleton RP, applying with one of the skeletons is optional. You always keep it open to OC as well. So you're you're not gonna have like a set cast when you do a skeleton role play. It's pretty much always gonna be skeleton plus OC, which we'll talk about OC next, but I just wanted to mention that so that the, the context of my comments made sense. Yeah, and I think that we would argue, knowing how we run our RPs, and I, I guess I'm speaking for you on this one too. Um, sure, that, that's fine. <laughs> that, like, we, we've always been welcoming to OC. I mm -hmm. know that there are certainly groups that aren't, um, but even, in, even when we were doing HP back in the Marauders day, originally we were open to OCs then. Yep. Um, in that like, in, in, that at least made sense in the world. Like we couldn't have, uh, you know, Harry Potter's sister because Harry Potter was like, you know. Um, <laughs> but but we did encourage original characters to come in to the world. Um, so I think that there's also space with bio to have OCs as well. Absolutely, but I think I think bio is the type of role play that if, when OCs are not welcome, it's typically a bio role play. That's very fair. Because yep. bio people have control issues. What? Um, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and if that's you, like, okay, I guess we can go back to this. If that's you, if you're a mod that's that's still working through some control issues that you've got, run a bio RP. Like, don't even don't even try to pretend that you want other things. Just run the bio RP. You know, you're gonna be happier. Everybody else is gonna be happier. <laughs> Alex, you're welcome to do it. You're gonna have more success in the fandom than you are in original content uh, um, RP. But there is nothing wrong with that. Go forth and do with blessing. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think with the skeleton and the reason why we then don't ask for writing samples for skeleton RPs is because you see the thoughts and the ways that a player has built their character come out. Because mm -hmm. so they, they, they have to finish the history. They have to add more than just the three sentences we wrote. They've taken three, they've taken three or four sentences uh, and made it two or three paragraphs. That's a long mm -hmm. bio, but it certainly happened. <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> queen of long bios. Um, <laughs> no, and then they, we've taken, um, and then you see that. And then also for our apps with skeleton stuff too, we also ask for a personality section. Mm -hmm. So not only have we thought about the history, but then you've thought about actively what is your character like? Mm -hmm. So these things happened to them, but we are not our history. We are made up of our history. So as characters, how does that contribute? And what do they look like? Are they sassy? Are they shy? Are they friendly? Do they hate everybody? Uh, do they brood in the corner? Do they not talk? Like, tell me about their personality. And that also gives us another level level of depth that we know our players had to think about in order to write this application. Yep, because we want to we want to see basically a personality that that connects with the history that makes sense. Like this is what this person has been through, so this is how they behave. Like we want to see that through line, right? Okay. So that's why we have that personality section in there. I love that. Um, I love that uh, Thumper mentioned Leone. Yeah, Leone started out as a skeleton, and, I, and that's a wonderful just Jane's character, one of Jane's characters that she likes to play a lot. Um, absolutely wonderful character. Also, Semper, 99% of my character personalities are also the Theramex. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, it's most. It's actually more like eighty percent mental illness, twenty percent batshit crazy. Um, <laughs> two separate things. <laughs> oh my um, gosh! Oh, that that's a lie. There's some sliver of trauma in there too. It's fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all the best role play characters are like that, really. Uh, you have to. What is a protagonist if not? deeply traumatized <laughs> not a role play protagonist definitely <laughs> not a character in general like i we, we this is something that we will continue to talk about spoilers for next week's shadow and bone um <laughs> media episode but uh if they are a main character they're traumatized just probably in, NYA, <laughs> in general uh if you can prove me wrong awesome but you can't prove me wrong because I'm not and you know wrong. if they if they aren't traumatized don't worry the narrative will get them there anyway <laughs> yeah anyway so um so we we tend to when we run role plays we tend to run them as skeleton role plays where we write up a bunch of skeletons to inspire potential players give them ideas about what we're looking for make sure that um that they're aware of the sorts of things we think would be cool, um, that sort of stuff. Because players want to know that. They they want to have some kind of assurance that their ideas are going to be received well and with excitement, right? And a skeleton will do that because even if they don't apply with the skeleton, reading through the skeletons, they can see like, oh, they're interested in somebody with this role or they're interested in somebody with this type of personality or they're interested with in these type of face claims or blah, 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 whatever, right? Um, so... <laughs> You know, uh, that's that's why why we run typically skeleton role plays. And then in addition to to skeletons, um, we also welcome OCs. And some role plays are all OC, even. Uh, oh, thumb for uh, <laughs> Landon. Uh, did you watch the the community day vod? It was me and Thumper and Jane mostly. I it was so not. funny. <gasps> oh no! You need to go back. You need to go back and and watch the segment where we played um, TKO. <laughs> Okay, I will. Here, not talk to the relationship. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh. Every, that's, yeah, okay. Is that <laughs> every, every main character is traumatized, but every relationship is toxic? Yes. <laughs> is that the summary? Oh, mm -hmm. good. Because <laughs> I, I need the opposite shirt. <laughs> Here, it's, toxic relationship. <laughs> it's fun. What? Fucked up yes. dynamics? Never, not me. Please be here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, never, never ever. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, So that's talk about OC apps since we're talking about um since we were talking about skeletons and how we write them. Yes. Uh, so it's... okay, so then what is what is an OC like application process um type of role play, etc. look like then, Landon? I because it goes hand in hand with skeletons especially in rrps oc is basically no skeleton <laughs> it's come with your own ideas and your own character and again we've talked about that ocs can be based they can be based on characters so if i want to take faust michelson from tvd and i want to put it in a sci-fi world what would that look like mm -hmm. right uh, he's in the fantasy modern world what would he look like in a sci-fi spaceship world uh, I can I can do that, but he'd still be considered an OC because he I would be making him original from scratch for this world. Yeah. Um, and basically, you then come up with all of it. So you're not going off of the idea that this RP needs a doctor. You're like, oh, who does what? It, what is necessary in this RP, or what do I? Not even taking into consideration with the rp what do i want to play mm -hmm. uh how do i think this character would fit into this world and build it from there so you're you're building all the same parts that a skeleton rp app would have but you don't have the skeleton mm -hmm. uh you have you have to create it yourself which i don't think is any less or more work than a skeleton app it's just different. Yeah, um, it is. Because I think instead of focusing... Have... Go ahead. Oh, I think instead of focusing on um, 
on the the skeleton that you've read and trying to add more to it, you're really heavily focusing on whatever of information is in the role play lore book about the world, right? So you're really just looking at this is the whole world in its entirety. Let me find a missing puzzle piece and slot my character into that puzzle piece, right? That's what you're doing when you're doing um, an OC application. Yeah, and it's, it's, I find that to be, I tend to find that more fun. Um, but I also recognize that I help write a ton of the skeletons. So inherently coming up with the ideas is something as a mod, I'm used to doing. Mm -hmm. um but i i like the oc version of it and i think that that allows for a lot more freedom and i think it allows for people to be attracted to your rp mm -hmm. uh, again when you when you have it open up to hey here are some ideas to inspire you but if you're not inspired by any of these go batshit crazy yep because um, role players at the end of the day for for um for all of our shyness and awkwardness that we can have a lot of us are also control freaks <laughs> we don't want nobody telling us what to write we want to write it ourselves <laughs> and i mean like i said there's nothing absolutely wrong that if you like bio rp awesome if you like to have that skeleton it makes it nice to sit there and be like oh man i know exactly what's needed i have this idea let's run with it Mm -hmm. But also, if you just sit there and go, oh, I want to have a, a modern day mafia inspired version of panic from pain and panic from Disney's The Hercules, how can I bring that in here? Um, and how can I use this in the world? Then that's just like an, another fun way of character building that obviously takes a lot of thought and practice that really gets you closer to understanding that character, which yep. at the end of the day is all apps should be doing. Mm -hmm. Is making sure that the, that the mods have an idea of the character that is coming in and that the player has an idea of how they're going to build this character. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep, that's really what you're trying to do. From from the player perspective, you're trying to show show the mods like this is how I believe this character will fit into this world you guys have put together. And then from the mod perspective, you are you're looking for what you think will fit in. Oh no, we lost Landa for a minute. Oh wait, she's back. Sorry, my computer, <laughs> I was listening. My computer wasn't plugged in, so I had to plug in my computer. Uh oh. Well, we don't want the computer to uh, to die, so that makes As sense. Posting the Zoom, no, we do not. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that would suck. <laughs> um. So yeah, when you're when you're no matter which type of application we're talking about, whether we're talking about Atlas, whether we're talking about you know um, Bio Skeleton, OC, any of it. Really, at the end of the day, what matters is that um, that as the player, you're communicating to the mods, how you believe your character fits into the role play, right? Yeah, and I think I think we can also dig into this whole idea a little bit more too, as far as like the purpose of application. Mm -hmm. Because there are multiple perspectives of this. So yes, what we will preach, it is how you are communicating to the mods, what and how you want to play, as mods, there are plenty of other reasons to have apps set up as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we um, want to talk to mods a little bit then, as far as yeah. app setup. Let's talk about it. Okay. Um, I think I think an important thing is is um, is what an application does is also. Sorry, my cat is looking at the roof out the window. So yeah, there's something on your roof. <laughs> the open, so he could have jumped onto the roof, which I was like, Sherlock, don't you freaking down. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> it's fine. Uh, no, so uh, it, it sets the standard of expectation of what you expect from your players. How much thought, how much time, how much energy to get to know their characters. Uh, an appless RP means that, like, they don't necessarily have to think about how it fits into the world until they're already writing it. Mm -hmm. 
that's not bad. That's not good. It's just reality. Yep. Uh, if you have a very heavy application, several, several pages of lore intensive questions, of bio building, of all of these things, it will take a lot of extra work. Um, which means that I also think it means that you're holding a you're holding a standard for your players, but you're also holding a standard for yourself. Mm -hmm. if your application has a lot of rules and a lot of like questions about lore. You need to hold your players to that lore. Yep, yep, and it can be it can be a challenge, right? Like I think it can be kind of a challenge. the 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 more that you've got in your app. Right. The more that you've got going on in your app, the more, um, you know, tends to be the more strict the role play is. Right. So the less you've got in your app, the looser it is. Now, this isn't always true, but that tends to be what I see. And so that's the impression that you're giving off. The more that you've got going on in your app, the more people are going to like try to be very by the book to the letter, impressive, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And the less you've got, the more they're going to be like, you know, casual about it and not think anything's a big deal. Right. Exactly. Um, and that's not good or bad. Like we're not trying to say an impression or that there's a perfect speak bot. There is for our mock, for our mock team. Like there's a certain level of hands-onness that we expect. We expect well thought out characters, but at the same time, like we're not gonna hold people hostage by what they've written in their apps. Yeah. <laughs> uh, characters change once you start writing them, whether you want them to or not. Absolutely. Uh, and probably for good reasoning too, because sometimes like a lot of like, especially in our RPs, you don't have access to the what is being written until after you've applied mm -hmm. uh, we we have a we have a firewall quote unquote basically saying that until you've applied and been accepted you can't read what's being written Protect yeah. ourselves well you get life. you get all the lore and you can talk to anybody that you want to but you can't actually see the role play itself so that's how we set ours up like yeah and so i'm sure that there have been plenty of times where we have written where people have like watered down maybe the maliciousness of their characters in a story like Atlantis, which was our mom, yeah, RP, um, because they're like, oh, we don't want to write that, you know, heavier, make it that bloodthirsty. Upon then reading what other people were writing, maybe their character is more bloodthirsty than they thought. Uh huh. <laughs> natural change that you would have no idea how to predict yep. until you saw it. Yeah, um, we've also seen vice versa, like people that kind of are like, well, I, I have ambitions to write this, this character that is, you know, more evil and stuff. And then when it comes time to write it, they realize like, oh, actually, I'm not having a lot of fun writing the evil. Um, you know what I mean? Ah, yeah, Static Salamander, thank you for the follow. Um, Static Salamander, by the way, is an, is an art streamer um, and is incredibly talented. So I didn't even know you were here, honey. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give you a shout out. There we go. Y'all go follow Static Salamander. Okay. Um, resume. Sorry. <laughs> no, I also think... Um... <laughs> oh, lurking. Thank you. Yes. I also think that there is a... Um... Yeah, you've seen, we've seen the opposite. Or we've seen like, hey, this is the trajectory I want to take my character. And then upon joining the RP or perhaps even interacting with one of the fellow players... Mm -hmm. They suddenly fall in love and maybe go a completely opposite way or a different path of the trajectory or the plot that you had thought of before. Mm -hmm. That's not a bad thing. That's natural. That's part of what makes RP interesting. Yep. That emergent it's storytelling, right? Yep. But it means that, like, you can't foresee that happening. Your app is going to be different than how you play your character. Yep. It's not a bad thing. Yep. Uh, That's just kind of part of it. But what it does do is I think sets a standard of how like, this is what we expect from our players. This amount of depth and thought is what we expect from our players. And uh, also this is what you can expect from the mods. Yep. Like we're going to ask for a lot of depth, then our lore is going to be deep. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> if we're going to ask for a lot of, of uh, backstory, 
then that's going to come into play maybe in events or ways that we can or the ways that we can make the rp exciting mm -hmm. um i know that like uh, with rps that aren't necessarily ours but that have been more heavy with mods like being more involved in the ways that the main plots go uh they take those character backstories into consideration when they throw curveballs in yeah, and if you have a smaller group, you can really do that. So if you've got like a if you've got a small group, um, guarantee you crazy stuff you put in that backstory, your you, your mod and admin team is going to use it. I promise you. More, more of a DM than necessarily a mod team, but those yep. those those uh, groups exist and can exist on those small levels. But that means that they might require more in depth backstory than light backstory. Mm hmm. Uh, and and it really does set that standard of what to expect when you look at the app, which is why also I think it is an incredibly important thing to look at the application before you even consider applying. Yep. Uh, because I have also run into this thing where it's like, oh, I put so much time and thought and energy into my character and coming up with my character and I'm so excited for this. And then I find out all they need is one paragraph and my character's age. <laughs> it's, like, it's almost like a stop to the momentum because it's like, oh, that that isn't what I'm looking for. It's not bad, it's not good, it's just not my style. Mm -hmm. um, and the other is true where people are like, I really just wanted to join this thing for fun and now you're asking for four paragraphs about a character that I'm not even sure is gonna stick around for a month. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh, yep. So um, in, in addition to reading everything else, I mean, we, we basically, our team read everything, but reading the app is really critical. Um, they, there's a lot communicated there simply based on the questions that the mod team is going to ask you. Yeah. Um, also, I think the, uh, another purpose of applications is to ensure that each character is a bit different, right? Oh, wait, before we get to that point, we have a chance card. So during warm-ups, Malcolm notices that one of the starting players has forgotten her knee brace on the practice field. Without the brace, the first strip stringer? The first oh, the first stringer will surely re-injure herself as a bench warmer. Malcolm could make a good impression by returning the brace to her, or he could hide the brace since he'd be next in line for her position were she oh. to be sidelined. Oh no. Um Is no, he gonna hide or return? Return the return the brace. Be a good Return person. the brace? You're okay. a dad. Bring the brace. Oh, right. Oh, no, he's fine. Okay, so Malcolm picks up the specialized knee brace and heads off to find the owner, but almost immediately the starting player returns from her prescribed base free, brace free stretching routine to retrieve it. Unable to find it, she notices the team's management, who immediately begins a search. The brace is found in Malcolm's locker, who had only placed it there for safekeeping until it could be returned, but Malcolm has fined $1,000. Um, we don't have $1,000, so now we have $0. That's what you get for trying to be a good person, Malcolm. You shouldn't do that in the future. Trying to show a good example. Yeah, well. <laughs> Those chance cards, it doesn't matter which one you pick. You can have negative or positive from either way. So there's not a good answer or a bad answer. They're just for fun. All right, so another another purpose of, um, of applications is to ensure... Um, to ensure diversity, right, with the character types. So if there's already a couple of characters that are of a similar type, then having the application gives you a chance to show the mod team how your character is different. So I'll give a tabletop example because I think that's a really easy way to understand this. If there's already two bards in the party, maybe making a bard isn't the best idea. You know, maybe you should make something else, right? Hear me out. Party of bards. <laughs> okay. I mean, if you really want to go there. <laughs> no, anyway, continue. Sorry. Yeah, no, you're good. So, like, you know, you want you you want to feel special. Everybody that's role playing wants to feel special in some regard, right? So, if you make a character that's very similar to another character that's already in the role play, you're going to make them feel less special. You're going to uh, feel less special yourself. It's just not going to be a fun time for anybody. So part of the purpose of the app is writing out the character so that you can confirm for yourself and for the mod team that what you're doing with your character is different, right, than other characters that already exist in the role play. I also think that this, on top of that, challenges the writer to make different characters than they already have. Yes. 
uh, because that's another problem is that it's not a problem. It's another thing that exists within RP is that there might be a certain type that you are comfortable with writing blonde haired, blue eyed girls who like bad boys. I don't know. Just coming off the top of my head. Or toddlers that play in toilet water. Look at this. Toddlers that play in toilet water. Um, I can't believe it. I'm so proud of this child. And she's eating a grilled cheese sandwich, so she's not going to catch him. Okay. Well, I mean, mother of the thing. Um, but yes, no, I think uh, this really, what was I saying? Oh yeah, being able to dif to make different characters and make your characters all differently. It yeah. lets mods keep track of the kind of characters that you have. Um, and, and also what writing holes or habits that you might have that you might not have never noticed before. Yep. This is particularly critical if a role play allows you to create multiple characters within that one role play. Because we've experienced this before with certain players, like they want multiple characters because they want more opportunities for role play, right? So that makes sense. But then they make the same character three times. And it's yeah. like, okay, you can't do that. <laughs> or, yeah, I mean, a, a, an example of, of one that is very, very common is powerful men, uh, like just in general. One, mm -hmm. one our peer player might have a multitude of very powerful men. Yep. Um, and then all of a sudden the powerful men in your RP might be run by the same player. Uh, and that's not necessarily a dynamic that as a mod, I would suggest getting into. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the power should be spread out through multiple different players. Yeah, different. All, all the players should have as much opportunity to feel like their characters are powerful as they desire. But if all of the powerful roles get taken up by one or two players, then um, players are going to feel like that the role play is skewed towards that particular person that keeps applying for that same type of character over and over. Yeah, I also think that um, it it gives a a nice little uh... hey, K variety. Hi, K. Um, it gives a, a nice little, like, it also lets you challenge what is power, mm -hmm. right? So if there is like this, this man who you have one character who is a powerful man who runs the casino, and then your second application is a powerful man that runs all the restaurants in town, you can sit there and be like, okay, if you want a powerful character that's a male, that's totally fine. But what are other ways this person can be powerful? that mm -hmm. are separate from how they're already powerful. And being able to do that and see that and track it through the applications shows, like can really be a useful tool for your players to be able to sit there and say, no, you can have a different sort of character in your repertoire and still be powerful. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, and then again, also doing it on a whole on a whole RP wide, if you already have a powerful man who runs all the casinos and someone asks for a powerful man that's running all the casinos, it's like, well, you already got that, my dude. <laughs> yeah, it exists already. Sorry. Um, so what are other ways that we can make this character powerful? Yep. Um, what ways are they different from the existing character that they have now? Mm -hmm. Have you and um, that character or that person thought or plotted out different storylines like it, it that application process really allows us to have multiple different stories without stepping on other people's toes yep because in in narrative role plays and there's a lot of ways that narrative role plays overlap with um just regular writing advice and i think this is is one of them you know a good piece of writing advice is when you're creating characters it's it's asking the question of do i need to make a new character or do i already have a character that can do this action that the plot requires right and if you already have a character that can do the action that the plot requires then don't make a new character there's no reason and uh, the same thing exists in role play if if you already have a character that's doing the thing then don't let somebody apply for the same type of character you know uh tell them like you know this is the same as this other character you need to change this you need to change that whatever it is that they need to adjust um but i i don't think it's it's appropriate in a role play to allow 
uh, carbon, what are essentially carbon copy characters. Like if you wouldn't have these two characters existing if this was a book, then they both shouldn't exist in the role play, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it's another tool in your repertoire to make sure and prevent this from happening because it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. like, like that's just the reality of being a Yeah, body. people are going to have the same so, idea when they read your lore. It's just going to happen. Yeah, if someone is playing a really fun character that is getting a lot of attention, uh, someone is going to at, like whether it's subconsciously or consciously try to copy that idea mm -hmm. uh, because they might want that attention or they might really enjoy that plot or they might have done it just slightly differently but unfortunately that slight difference is not enough to make it a different story arc mm -hmm. so like good bad or indifferent copying and carbon copying is going to happen and having apps to prevent that from happening or asking and challenging your writers to think outside the box on instead of carbon copying, copying in a different color, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> then how can you do this? And, and this is just another tool of preventing that from happening. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Um, yeah, and it, and it also like, overall it helps, it helps things be inspiring. Uh, it helps people feel like their characters are important by yeah. having unique individual characters. Yeah. Uh, it also helps having, you know, apps really do help making sure that not all your characters are named James or Catherine mm -hmm. or something with an A. <laughs> Well, I don't know why in some of our role plays, like people love names that start with A and then it starts to get really confusing because all yeah. the character names start to kind of meld together in your head. Um, we've literally had situations where we've had to say, all right, guys, no more characters with names that start with A. I'm so sorry, but we just got to chill because it's too many. <laughs> and there's also been times when we're doing applications, no more witches, no more yeah. fire witches, no more vampires no more i mean i think at one point we already said no more men no more vampire men <laughs> like mm -hmm. like there's a lot going on yes exactly we had a lot of a, a lot of like the hey we're going to take a pause on building this kind of character uh -huh. um, and if you have an app it means that it's just that much easier to do it yeah if you have in-depth app that like that that you use as a tool and not as a power trip it's much easier to be able to have that be done yeah we did have a lot of j's in atlantis another thing that um this is i just mentioned it because this happens in a lot of role plays if there is the ability to make a stripper in your role play you're gonna have a gajillion strippers it's just a fact it's a fact of role play so if that's a possible job <laughs> Very few of them will actually write a stripping scene. It's really upsetting, actually. <laughs> if you're gonna make a sex worker, at least include sex work in your character. That's, That's so saying. true. That's so true. <laughs> uh, but there's a lot of societal expectations why people don't do that anyway we won't yeah and that's that. not what this that's not what this stream is about but just this is another example of just something that you're going to end up seeing it over and over and over in the apps so be aware and understand that you might have to place certain limits um the only limit that i would say uh that i would never try to place is, and we did this in the past and i regret it and we would not do it in the future is gender limits right like i'm i'm never I'm not a fan of saying like no more males, right? Or no more females. And the reason why is because a lot of times it comes from the idea of like, um, oh, well, shipping potential. It's like, well, the characters could be gay. Like you don't freaking know. Yeah. Also, we've, it's been discussed in the mod chat, but it's something that we've never supported, but have seen in other RPs. And that's stopping certain, like putting a, a, a pause or a no more of this allowed on certain plots yeah in the app so um age gap came up in one of our things that that there was a recommendation of stopping age gaps and it's like well no we wouldn't use the app system to stop that reasoning mm -hmm. um yep so really it is like it, i would i would say like jobs or character traits mm -hmm. or certain character tropes not character plots not anything like that none of that is necessarily a stoppable reason or something to like put a pause on for your entire rp to put in your app and say we're not accepting this at any time it's going to be character traits no vampire males because we already have 50 of them 
Um, yep. Like, if you so, want to make a dude, please don't make a vampire or something like that, you know? <laughs> well, fire witches. Air is as cool as fire. Like, like do better. Um, all of yep. that. So I think that, that that all comes down to things that you can control with an application system. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last thing that uh, what the purpose of an app does is it, it makes sure that the characters are thought out to the expectation that the mods want them thought out best. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by this is that if there is like contradiction, or things that need to be changed, or the lore isn't quite understood, apps give a great space to be able to see where those missing marks are for the, the players. Mm -hmm. So if someone doesn't understand how vampires are made, that comes out in the vampire app rather than in the, in, rather than them then st stating it in the RP and then that becoming <laughs> yeah, and then it's awkward, and then it's awkward to try to correct them, and you have to have, to have the conversation of, do we even want to correct them? What's the value in correcting them? Da da da, da and it becomes like a whole thing, right? Yeah. Um, it's much easier to catch it in the application process. So, so it does it does ensure that because um, once you have to once you have to write an actual character, it ensures a lot more that you probably understood the lore that you read. And, it, and if you don't, what this really does is it gives a great platform for like mods to review the application and then come back with suggestions, which yep. is our, which is our, which our, which is our next topic. If you want to start into it, unless you had more. No, this is good. Okay, so we're we're into the second half of the stream now, and during the second half, we wanted to talk about um, application review processes, accepting applications, denying applications, what that what that means. So, before we get started in that too much, I've got a couple things that I just want to say about our personal philosophy, right? So we don't deny applications. And by that, I don't mean like that we never deny applications. We have had situations where we've had to deny applications. But in general, it's our policy to, when we read a, a bad app, <laughs> that telling someone no thank you is not the response that we have. What we do instead when we're looking at an application that's, you know, that's bad, right? It's, it's not what we're looking for is as a mod team, we'll have a couple of us read it at least. Um, it doesn't have to be all the mods, but at least a few mods read it and give notes like, okay, this thing here doesn't make any sense or I don't like this or this is too similar to um, what this other character is or whatever. Like what all these things that we've talked about so far, we'll like make a list of essentially all of those things. And we go to the applicant and we say, hey, for your application, to be accepted, we need this, 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 and this changed, right? Um, and uh, and Landon, if you want to expand on that too, because I, I mean, you've been a part of this process for years and years and years. Um, but that's basically how we quote unquote deny apps. Like we don't, yeah. we just give notes. We, I think that um, we really took into consideration the idea that an application is uh, asking permission to join the club. Mm -hmm. And we are not looking at people to ask permission to prove that they are good enough to join the club. Yeah. Uh, we go under the basic assumption that you are good enough to join the club because you exist. Yeah. <laughs> there is in order to get the most out of your game here. This is what we, what we uh, expect from you. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not necessarily like, a bit like it's not even like like even if they fill it out half-assed we have had plenty of people fill out our applications with the absolute bare minimum and and have accepted them mm -hmm. uh, it is not our job to like really judge what exists inside the app or what your character's history is like we're not we're not here we don't have to like what you're doing with it we just have to make sure that it meets the standards that we are looking for and those right. standards don't have to do with necessarily spelling grammar anything like that it has to do with or even like 
figurative language or, or metaphor. It has to do with, uh, does it follow our lore? And is it unique to what's going on? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we don't really see applications like an audition. We see it a lot more like, if you think about like a club in real life, right? Like if you were to join um, some kind of club in, in real life, um, what gets you to stay in that club is literally just showing up and paying your dues and, and, and just, and not being a jerk, of course, but, um, but beyond that, there's no requirement, right? Like if you were to join so like a knitting club, I don't know, right. In real life or, or something, um, any, any kind of club, really, it would just be to come to the meetings and pay your dues and not be a jerk, right? You don't actually have to engage in the activity regularly or or even well right you just have to try right and be there and that's what we really think of when we think of the the role play too like we don't think of it as this audition where you're proving if you're good enough we're really literally just looking for if you understood the lore and 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 if you are may bringing something unique like literally that's it um, I'm happy to correct typos in applications, you know, it's totally fine. Um, you know, if you can write coherent sentences that we understand, then we're good, you know. Um, like I'll give an example, uh, plenty, plenty of applicants we've had where they can't spell, <laughs> you know, but it's not, we still understand what they're trying to say, but yeah. the spelling is awful. Um, and even then, it's fine. we have at times sat there and it was like, if something isn't coherent, we haven't then responded with, hey, no, we're denying your application. We respond with, we don't understand what's happening. Can you please take a double, can you please take a second look to make sure that you can understand what your point is? Because we don't. Yeah. <laughs> or clarify this section. If this particular section is, you know, obviously two sentences coming together that don't make any sense. Like, like we've yeah, we'll just ask them to explain. We ask them to explain. We ask them to expand upon it. We ask them. Uh, for all those things, but we, the only time I can think that we have outright denied application uh, to someone coming into the RP is when, is if they are an EL, if they are ELL, English language learner, mm -hmm. and they are not quite at the level of being able to write full sentences. Yeah. And it's not even necessarily, it's not even necessarily for RP purposes, like their RP could be bad, but if they yeah. can't even do English well enough to communicate out of character, then That's unfortunately awesome. we have to deny them because like, you know, if they can't communicate out of character, they're never going to be able to role play. They're not going to be successful in our RP, which is, heavy, which is tend, tend to be more on the literate side. It's a combination. Um, but it, it tends to be more one or two paragraphs uh, and then constant, constant talk in the chat. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a very active out of character chat happening. Um, and if, if we know that we're setting up people to fail, if they aren't able to engage with those two things. Mm -hmm. um, and even then we won't, we won't straight up deny. We'll just suggest that be like, hey, this might not be the RP for you yet. Yeah. The, and the only thing that I can, the only time that I can think of that we straight up have told somebody like, no, this is, and this is not negotiable period end of story is they made like that horrible of a first impression. <laughs> oh, can I, can I, give an, I, they didn't stick. There was a, we had a Disney RP uh, and someone asked to play Hitler Mickey Mouse. This is the same story I was thinking of. Okay. <laughs> okay. So Sorry, I, didn't mean to, I didn't mean to steal it. <laughs> no, no, you're good. You're good. Cause this is the exactly what I was thinking of too. Okay. So this like literally happened. Um, somebody joined our role play and was basically like, do you guys have restrictions on the types of plots people are allowed to write? And we're like, no, we really don't. We don't do that sort of thing. Um, you can write whatever you want, you know, just, just read the lore so you can see what kind of stuff other people are doing here. You can, so you can catch the vibe and then fill out an app. And they were like, okay, well, am I allowed to play Hitler? And I was like, this is a Disney role play. Cause I was like so shocked they even asked that. Okay. I was like, this is a Disney role play. And they were like, okay, well, can I play Mickey Mouse as Hitler? And I was like, what? And this was a back and forth, like I'm shortening it, right? But this was a 20 minute back and forth of them trying to convince us that of this Hitler Mickey idea. And it was like so uncomfortable, y'all. It was like the most uncomfortable thing I have ever seen. And here's the crazy part. 
is if they had just been like, okay, cool, I've got a dark idea, I'm going to write the app, y'all tell me if it's too dark, and just written it, you know what? I bet we would have accepted it. If like, we probably would have. If, if we could have proven that they, if they could have proven that they could successfully write this, and also not been anti-Semitic in the chat. Yeah. Uh, and and it's proven that this is purely a character choice. I think a Hitler slash racist Mickey Mouse X inspired S character would have been a hoot for the RP. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they obviously couldn't. They were no, but they they were like. They were like trying to get their character approved before they even wrote the app, basically. And yeah. that plus the plus the person, just the things that they said, just being so ridiculously yeah. uncomfortable. We we were just like, dude, you need to leave. This is not the RP for you. And I think I ended up kicking them and thank God they didn't come back. We didn't ban them or anything, but it was just like the most uncomfortable 20 minute conversation I've ever had with a potential applicant. It was ridiculous. Was anyway, that's the only time I can think of that we literally straight up told someone, no, um, there's no way you can convince us we're done. <laughs> we had some, we had a, we had a person be fairly dark humor in the chat before they mm -hmm. applied. Uh, that it they very much turned the entire RP against them. That if yeah. they had gotten to the point of applying, we would have said no. Yeah. Uh, we didn't talk about that as an admin, admin team because it wasn't dark humor. It was racist and sexist humor. Yeah, they were being like really rude for no reason. Yeah, and, and they said some things and then like very dog whistly. And then we were just like, it was just shut down, basically being like, you're not. Yeah, we didn't have to say anything. <laughs> I remember that situation. We didn't have to say anything. A bunch of the other um, people that had been in the role play for a minute were like, dude, no, shut up. Like, yeah. you're not funny. And they're like, y'all don't appreciate my sense of humor. And I think someone literally replied, because you're not funny. <laughs> yeah. And so then they never applied and it was never a problem. <laughs> and it was, they left and it was never a problem. But we were talking in the admin chat that if they had applied, we would most likely deny them simply because they had turned the entire RP against them. And at this point, there was no coming back from that. Yeah. Like, I mean, they basically team. made like three fourths of the role play mad enough to voice yeah. that they dislike this person. Yeah. So, um, and then that's like directly denying quote unquote outright before app. And the only time that we really denied characters that have like for people who have already been a part of the RP, so second or third characters, mm -hmm. is that those characters are too alike uh, from their from the first character. Mm -hmm. So you know, again, a, a blonde stripper or a powerful man vampire. Like if you're applying for that same exact character, we have at times sat there and said this idea will not work if you would like to continue to talk about how to expand it or adapt it into something that can work we can talk about that but no you are not going to have another blonde stripper or another male uh mafia boss yeah we've had the uh, conversation with players before where it's like um i can't tell this face claim apart from your other face claim um, and they might feel like we're telling, we're denying their app. Um, we're not trying to deny the app. We're just saying that this aspect of your idea is not sustainable, right? And if you want to have a second character, you totally can, but they can't, this concept isn't going to work. You, you might be able to take this piece and this piece from the concept, but overall it's just, it's not going to happen because this is identical to this other thing you're already doing. So it's exactly that idea that applications are not auditions and we give excessive feedback. Mm -hmm. or sometimes what I feel is excessive feedback uh, for when we're asking players to correct in a good way, asking people, players to correct uh, or change something about their application. Mm -hmm. And this is just a one time thing. We've had, we, what is the, like someone working on an application for two plus weeks, mm -hmm. like daily. Yeah. We've had, we've had people write like four or five drafts of an application. Uh, <laughs> and, and still gladly we'll read it. Gladly we'll then give feedback. We'll talk about it. We'll have conversations. Um, all of those things that are involved with being a mod reviewing um applications 
but just goes to show that we won't, there isn't an end. We won't deny. Mm -hmm. We're just sitting there and being like, these are the standards and things that need to make sense in our world. And it, we're not trying to make it difficult for you. This is literally, everyone has to check these boxes. Yep. Uh, and we will try to get you to check these boxes and we will try to help you as best we can. Yep, yep. It's outside of writing the app for them. <laughs> there have been a couple times where it's been like, what about this idea? And I'm basically writing the app for them. Um, yeah. I mean, but, they still have to put it down, but there's there's been people that have gone like point by point through their character ideas, asking yeah. us what we think. <laughs> yeah, gladly we'll do it because we know how we expect our applications and build our characters to be, to be we know that it's a lot sometimes for some people, um, but that is, that is the standard that we want. And that is the mm -hmm. expectation. Mm -hmm. um, so really like that, that working through things and sitting there and, and making a list of, of things that we, that are not wrong, but things that we want to see improvement in yep. or, or, yep. or even clarification. And that can go from, Hey, the, this aged, oh, the most common one, uh, we will get several younger women uh, writing women characters who will have accomplished and be the best at their field by the age of 22. Yeah. Uh, man, I wish. <laughs> man, that would be so nice. I started college when I was 21. That'd be dope as fuck, right? Um, 22 <laughs> best in the world. Uh, but that's not that's not how it works, and yep. we want that sense of of uh, age and uh, success to meet. Absolutely cool with young prodigy stuff, but if you cured cancer and also learned how to make dogs talk in English, and also uh, you know, dated several people and, and all of these things, you're not going to be 21. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, it's, it's just got, there's got to be enough time to have done it, right? Like, uh, yeah. totally cool with a child prodigy, right? But pick the specific thing that they've been working on since birth. Don't tell me that your 22 year old has two master's degrees. No, they don't. I don't care how smart they are. There's not enough time for them to have done that in their life. They're, they're not you a know, by 21. Like, that just, like, like, you're not even allowed to apply to be a doctor <laughs> before that i feel uh yeah. and then we still have residency and all of these things like we have to keep it in some semblance of reality and i think again this has that there's a lot of things that that come with why that is it is very common um but that is something that we stick to and we will sit there and be like you need to age the character up Mm -hmm. I know you want to play a 21 year old because you're 16 or 18 and 21 seems like ancient but I'm telling you, you like 21, 25 is not ancient in the way of the world. <laughs> it's really not. Thank you so much for the hosts, um, Sonic and Kayla. They're back again. They were here. Um, they did some hosts for us last week, I think. Thank you, guys. You guys are so All right. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that happens. I feel like a, a lot of younger role players, they're like, well, I can't play someone older, but I want to play someone accomplished. Well, it takes time to get to be accomplished so that is something that we see a lot and we would we've definitely given plenty of times feedback of like we're happy to accept this character if you make them 27 and then you don't have to change anything else just make them 27 and then we'll accept them right or things like that right oh your yeah. kid's totally a hipster <laughs> i love it the only other like look at him he's got the blonde hair you can see from under his beanie but he's wearing the beanie listen i raised my children right and mostly because i've been in my underwear the entire time Mm hmm the best way to be <laughs> the best way to be um no and i think that uh it's yeah it oh i lost it i had a great thought and then i lost it i'm talking about hipster children oh i think what we were what were we saying before um someone in the chat help us yeah someone in the chat help us what were we saying before so landon can collect her thought again I know we were talking more about our, our review process and our... No, you did not ruin it, Katie. No. That was a good comment and you're right. Please talk to me. Please talk to us. I love it. Yeah. No, we were talking about like our review process and how we really don't... We don't deny apps. I know that's what the topic that we were on. Yeah, literally there have been times where it's like, just change this person's age. You don't even care if the FC is not old enough to be that age. Just change the age. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was it. 
21 to 27. Sometimes that is our feedback mm -hmm. uh, because it it makes it like because we uh, we really want and focus on an aspect of realism in our RPs that we don't we want things to be realistic to an extent. So yeah. even if it's fantasy, even if it's a thing, it's like, yeah, if you cured cancer, you're not 21 years old. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, and, I, and I think, like, it just depends on what your comfort level is. Like, there are other things that I'm happy to hand wave and, and say, like, well, I don't really care. This isn't realistic, but what, whatever. But the older I get, the, the more I get um, sensitive to characters that are, like, accomplished everything by age 21. And I just, I'm sorry, I'm 34 and I can't stand that anymore. You know, there was a time where I was like, whatever, I don't care. This is stupid, but whatever, we're going to accept it anyway. But I can't anymore. Um, <laughs> I have those control issues. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, you know you just as a mod team you just have to think about like what's important to you what pieces what pieces are, are, are do you think are um, integral to the RP being the way that you want it to be and, and I want our RPs to always be very welcoming to older role players because I am an older role player right so that's where my the particular things that I value on the apps as far as what should be realistic versus what can be hand waved um, comes from um, yes Another part of our review process is, I think, directly to mods, mm -hmm. is that yes, we talk, we've talked about that when we're making decisions for application, that there is a mod consensus. So if you are five mods, that at least three mods have read the app and agree with an aspect of, hey, this app is good, this issue needs to be worked on, this thing needs clarification, like three people have to agree out of the five. Uh oh, she having her baby. Oh. Yeah, so we always have three out of five agreements. Right there in the middle of the lawn. Oh, good. In her underwear. In her underwear. Great. Her neighbors watching. I love mm -hmm. the reputation that she has set forth. Uh, which it? last name? Oh. Last name. Okay, oh, so if it's a girl, it's going to be Lily. Um, I can't remember what the boy name was. Lily That's right, Kronk. Give me a Lily Thank you, Katie. Yes, Kronk. Oh. <laughs> Another blonde. Another, I mean... Okay, it's a girl, so we're going with Lily. Lily! Lily, Lily, Lily! Okay, so we've got Tormund and Lily. Tormund and Lily. I love it. Aww. And Malcolm worked so hard going back inside. <laughs> <laughs> at least he was there for her at least he was good husband i suppose yeah he's doing a pretty good job <laughs> but yeah and then and then on top of that making sure that even if they aren't part of the the other mods are not part of the conversation that they're reading and giving feedback mm -hmm. there there have been a couple times where like three of us have read it and sat there and was like this is good or this one part needs clarification and then another mod come back that did not, that was not part of that consensus and was like, yo, also that age though. <laughs> yeah, they'll be like, actually, I hate this part. And we're like, shoot, we didn't even think of that. Do we care? Yeah, and like, then we, it's oh, like, oh, well, now we have to have the whole conversation because we didn't even think about that. And like it, I also think that there is an, like, I also think that maybe this is a me thing. I think that it's really easy for players to not read bios mm -hmm. unless they have to. Mm -hmm. uh, your mods should not be those people. Mm -hmm. Which means that I think, like, as part of the mod team, it is a, yes, mods work on different things. People have different jobs. People might respond more thing on um, one thing more than others. But it is part of a mod's job to read those applications and review and give feedback. Yep. Uh, that's part of that's part of the process, and I think that's something that we highlight as important. Absolutely, it's definitely important in, from my perspective. You know, um, players aren't required to do everything that mods are required to do, and reading app, reading bios is is one of them. Now, a lot of players, a lot of our players, of course, do read the bios of every new character that comes in, and that's great and that's wonderful. But it's not required. And we can tell. No. Uh, <laughs> Well, sometimes, but sometimes we can't, you know, it really just depends on what that person's style is. 
don't get me wrong, when I join an RP, there have been times where I've not read the bios until I've interacted with that character. Um, mm -hmm. Or I've skimmed the bios when I'm creating a character. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I, I, I understand it, I get it, I hear it, it's fine. However, as part of the mod team, it, it should be something that is highlighted. There should not be one person responsible or only two people responsible for the bios. Yeah. Needs to be a yeah, mod. basically. Um, so yeah, uh, that's kind of our review process is that adapt gets submitted uh, at least three out of five, or at least a majority of the mods read it, uh, decide whether there is something that needs feedback or something that doesn't, or it goes through. Uh, it is then one mod's job to give feedback, to have those conversations with that person, uh, and to work with that person through another uh, app. If they rewrite an app, then it comes through and you need to reread it and mm -hmm. make sure that it makes sense in entirety, because sometimes people will change when you've asked them to change one thing they'll change three and sometimes one of those three won't make sense <laughs> yeah it's like wait it's how can happened. you do that because there's this like, other part of your app and they're like oh shoot i forgot about that part <laughs> fine. okay you don't have to change that but if, yep. but if you got inspired then cool uh and you do that until there aren't any questions and then that person gets accepted yep or that character, much. not the person, the character gets Well, the different. character, yeah. <laughs> That's the important thing because, again, as a player and as a mod, this is not an audition process. Yeah. It is, it is an application for a character. It is not an audition. Yep. And that's how we view it. And, and I find that to be the healthiest way. It's the way that's worked the best for us. Um, I know other role plays do things differently, and there's reasons for that. But um, I don't, I've never seen those situations actually pan out to create a better role play, right? And everything we do with our application process, everything that we've told you guys so far is based on trial and error of things that we have done and changed and tried and, and gotten, you know, right or wrong until we get to the point of like, oh, this actually kind of works. So we're going to keep doing this for a while, you know, until it doesn't work anymore. So that's that's basically our our method that we've that we've gone with this whole time. And um, and one other quick thing I would like to say on to add to what Landon was saying about like how we have the three mods review it and that it really every mod should read all the bios. Right. Even though we know the players don't read all the bios and that's fine. Um, I have seen uh, definitely some role plays where there is like a, an application mod and it's their job to review and approve applications and i as far as like mods coming into the cafe and talking about how do i deal with burnout i'm not getting the help that i need da 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 a lot of those complaints come from the quote unquote application mod reading and reviewing and approving applications for whatever reason leads to more burnout than other mod tasks so um just that's anecdotal based on what i've seen i would never have reading applications be the job of specific mods it's everybody's job for that reason for and it just it's just what i've seen it contributes to more burnout than other you know mod roles as it were i agree yep um and yeah it's also like if that if it's it's hard to then delegate that like if no one knows how to read apps or what to look for in apps, if that one person is not available to do that job, then it's incredibly difficult to then be like, to like try to pick that up for somebody else. Uh-huh, yep. Like, oh, this person's out of town for a week and they're not gonna be at their computer. And um, and so this new person's gonna read apps and their method of deciding what's good and what's not is like totally different. And yeah. it's like, that's not good. Or Landon isn't having a good couple of days and needs to take a breather. So does everyone just wait? Or does that then fall on the admin to, to accept mm -hmm. new apps and, and and everything like that? No, it should be an entire group decision. Um, also, the, the handy dandy thing that if you read enough apps, you, you learn how to tell certain signs. There's, mm -hmm. like a secret, there's like a secret language when reading apps. Yep. Uh, as jokingly and lovingly, 
uh, there are times when we can we can uh, predict down to the day how long a player is going to stay. <laughs> and if you've been a mod for a long time in role plays, you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? You do it for a few years, and and you run you run your type of role play. You know who your type of player is for a little while. You you just kind of know, like okay, it just happens. You know who's gonna stick. You know who's gonna be popular. You just you just know. So don't ask me like how I'm so sure that you just know. But but if you run role plays, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You just I, know. I am telling you to the day. Yeah. <laughs> there have been multiple times where we'll be like, ah, June 29th will be the birth of the, the time, the day that this person stops. Well, maybe not like that. Maybe not like that. But we can, we'll say things like this person will last to the first activity check and that'll be it. Or we'll say like this person will last to the first event and then they'll, they'll leave and that'll be it. You know, that's, that's, that's really what ends up happening. Um, if you're on role plays, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This person will never start. <laughs> <laughs> or this person, this person will only chat out of character and they'll literally never write a starter for anybody um and they'll just hang out for a few weeks and then when we ask them about why they never started role playing they'll just leave <laughs> the hardest thing about this is that you have to be objective with that information mm -hmm. there have been multiple times where i am on a fourth or fifth draft of an application knowing full well that this person will never write or respond to a starter. Yep. This care that this person will disappear in two weeks. Yep. And knowing that and still having to do it because it's yeah. part of the job. Mm -hmm. And you can't like again, it's not an application. It's not a if this person is good enough or not. This person might surprise you. Um they, they might not. You still need to give the dedicated amount of time and energy that they have asked for you to give in order to get them to the point that they then get to make that decision themselves. Yeah. That's yeah. You don't want to take it like, again, role players, we can be real control freaks. You don't want to take the decision away from your player when it's not necessary. And the application process is just a place where it's not necessary. I have never seen a role play benefit from denying apps because they can tell that this person's not going to stick, right? All that really does, in my experience, is demoralize the rest of the role play. It makes your other players can see you doing that. They understand what's happening, regardless of whether you tell them or not. They can just kind of tell by what goes on in the chat and what these people say, right? They get a sense of that. And then they feel like, well, oh gosh, what if mine is denied? Oh, another fire. That's lovely. <laughs> uh, everybody so wake up. Malcolm started Malcolm another fire. Is, I'm so glad that Malcolm is a pyromaniac. It's, <laughs> it's a lot. And he was just trying to make mac and cheese. Okay. It's useless and it's fine. Did he even go get the children? There's a fire. Did you not care, sir? Nope. It's okay. The firefighters got here quick enough. And the baby didn't even wake up, so that's great. <laughs> the most thing to ever happen in Sims that there's a fire and the baby never woke up because it's probably true. <laughs> fires. Uh, yep, Lily's just asleep. It's fine. Tormund woke up though, but it's time to play computer games, I guess. <laughs> Is there sort of Katie? Oh, Katie's right. There's literally a fire while we're talking about allegorical social fires. Yeah. So, so in my experience, denying apps because of reasons that are like, I don't think this person is going to stick, or I don't think anyone's going to get along with this person, or I don't think this character is going to be popular, or I just don't like this, that, or the other. I have never seen that go well. All that does is cause issues with the existing players. Oh my god, it so doesn't. And then like, it, you never get the opportunity because I will sit there and I'll be the first one to admit that I was also wrong. Mm -hmm. There have been players that I'm like, oh, this person this this is a great character and this person will never be able to make this character in, or this is not a great character they'll never be able to make this character interesting and then they do yeah and then the character's like banging awesome and everybody loves them and we were just straight up wrong or or something like it's not my place and i as much as i can like predict because of how long i've been in this or how much i can assume because of the patterns that i've seen I will never actually be able to tell the future as much as I want to, uh, yeah. because things surprise you all the time. People 
may suck at apps. There are certainly some people that suck at apps. Yep. And hell, like also, like and not to give away behind the scenes, but we were talking about Leo earlier. Leo, the character in the application, so different than Leo in the RP. Not saying that one, like I felt one way or the other, but it's again that example of being like so completely different than how you write them in an app versus how you write them when storytelling. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Solo it's, writing and role play are two different things. Yeah, and bio, and we have to remember that bio is still so, is still solo writing. Yep. Um, it is probably the most solo writing that there is because you're creating a character by yourself. Mm -hmm. It's it, it is like this incredibly different. Yeah, it's it's mind blowing, and we can't. It is not our job to judge that, even though there is a predisposition to, because no. we are experts. Yeah. <laughs> in some ways. We've read enough apps to be. Um, and it's those moments that are also magical to sit there and be like, hey, I'm not sure how successful this character is going to be. And then to find out that they're the badass bitch of the RP. Like, yeah. And, and that's I, happened. I have eaten my words many a time, um, which is why I've learned the rule of it's important not to judge off of my personal feelings for these mm -hmm. things. You have to be able to set aside and be like, cool, this character needs to get, be given a chance. And how do we have it tick these boxes? Mm -hmm. And these boxes have nothing to do with character attributes and simply have to do with finding the, like, making sure that it makes sense within the world. Yep. Yep. The only thing that has to do with character attributes is making sure they're not duplicating something someone else is doing. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Which is a whole, which is a whole different thing. Yep. Yep, and I mean, we've been wrong in the other direction, too. I can think of situations where we were like, this character is awesome, and this player is awesome, and they're asking all the right questions, and all this, it's great. And then they get in the role play, and then they then they just don't. <laughs> you know, that's happened, too. Give up. Absolutely. And, like, at the end of the day, this is just, the reality is, is that, yes, we can predict, predict but we can't truly predict. Yep. And it's okay to be wrong. That's what we're saying is that we have been wrong before and it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't uh, want, and, and I think, and I think the, the worst, the worst situation, like it's annoying to spend a bunch of time with somebody rewriting their app and rewriting their app and rewriting their app and then have them leave. Like that is annoying. Like I want to acknowledge that, you know, you're in, you're as a mod, you're in the hobby to have fun too. Right. So it's annoying, but what's worse, what's worse is letting someone good go that could have been awesome because you just happened to predict wrong about what their, you know, level of, um, of role play was. Yeah. And if you're, if you're going to go through with that judgment and judgment first, you may never meet some of the best people you've ever written with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You might miss out for sure. And it would really suck for that. So you know, the way, and this is, and this really goes back, so all of this philosophy about the apps and stuff and how we view ourselves really goes back to us constantly reminding ourselves that role play is a hobby and a social club, right? It's not a job, okay? It's not like, you know, some kind of skilled tier thing like you might have in like a, a shooter or a MOBA video game, right? That's not what it is. It is a, it is a fun social club and anything that tries to make it more than that um, on and tries to impose that on others. Like if you yourself want to get better, I think that's wonderful. But trying to impose that on others or institute a system that's that's like that, I, I think you lose something. I think you lose something. You, lo you lose a lot of the, um, the silliness that comes from the desire to do emergent storytelling that we do in role plays. Yep. And the app is a tool to be able to set the mod team up for as much success to build a world that you're able to do this emerging storytelling. But mm -hmm. it is not as much a tool to the player to be able to do that too. Yeah. To yes, both. In mind. So, did you have any other thoughts on apps? No, I think this is good. Um, as I said, if you guys are interested in, in any in more on this, I have a couple of different episodes of um, Spare Room uh, that you're welcome to go find. And if you go into the mod playlist, you'll find it there. 
Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think, I think at this point we've covered what we wanted to cover. Are we ready for the article or is there anything else you wanted to add, Landon? I'm good. I think that that was it for me. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and save. Then we're going to save and, uh, and quit. So we did have our, our spare today. So we've got Tormund and Lily. Um, what that means is that the next time that we stream Sims, the kill a Sim, option will be available in the channel points um, because now if we want Malcolm to die, he can. He has served his purpose. He doesn't have to stay in the household any longer. Um, now it is going to be very expensive, uh, but uh, but get ready for that next time. And the reason I'm... why is because he, he if, if we can get him to level five in his career, then we'll get um, a little reward for that that I want to unlock. But you know, if y'all want to kill him, go for it and we'll try to kill him. I'm just saying that the trust fund has worn out. <laughs> it did it did and now that we've had the two kids so i mean you know um we have an heir and a spare yep we have an heir and a spare we have an heir and a spare so we don't have to have him anymore if y'all don't want to keep him around just in case you were ever wondering what it's like to write with me it's like this me constantly being like but we could kill them <laughs> We could. All we right, could. Ready for the, good, the article? I am ready. Hit me. All right. This is definitely not as researched as I would like to say this, but it was just too good to resist. So, oh, okay. Coffee. Here we go. <laughs> coffee. <laughs> this is great. So, coffee <laughs> is now linked to reduce risk of many ailments, including liver disease, Parkinson's, melanoma, and even suicide. That's it great. Mentioned- all the other things in here too including cancer and obesity i mean why not why not hearing is that coffee coffee saves lives and if you want some coffee we know where you can get some (laughs) coffee can do anything coffee can do anything there's a link in case anyone just wants to remember that so basically this is what's saying is that uh, there is a lot of uh, the BBC and and some places in Europe or UK specifically in Southampton and Edinburgh published a article that basically says that coffee has led to the reduce of of risking um, these and getting these diseases such as liver disease uh, with only if you drink three or four cups a day, any more than that, you start risking it. Um, uh, but like definitely with the, with any kind of, uh, coffee, so instant carbonated, decaffeinated, um, and basically the, there was like less chance of people getting liver disease, um, Mm -hmm. and especially chronic kind, which is great. Uh, and that basically, um, this is this is new to what was said in 1991, which was basically saying that coffee was bad for you, uh, but that this proves like this is this is proof in the other direction that it actually might have good uh, effects for your body rather than like mm. negative car- carcinogenic. Okay, so let's let's use our troubleshooting and problem solving skills, considering all the the data that we have. There is probably correlation here, but not causation. I doubt that it's the coffee that's actually reducing the risks here, but there probably is some kind of correlation with people that tend to have a a cup or two of coffee in the morning with um, overall more um, stable, happy, healthy lifestyles. Now, there is a little bit more numbers in the depression. (laughs) In the depression, it was like, they instead of doing just three thousand tests, they did like over a quarter of a million people mm. uh, took a survey. But I also would like to say that addiction, when you are getting your vice, like caffeine, uh, tends to improve your mood. <laughs> and then rather when you're not getting your uh, your addiction, such as caffeine, uh, tends to lower it. So there's uh-huh. <laughs> there too. Uh, but mm-hmm. like I said, we're sponsored by a coffee person. <laughs> so yes. Might as well. Uh, Harvard says that it can help prevent type 2 di- diabetes, Alzheimer's. I'm just saying. Cool. Miracle drug. 
<laughs> well, I mean, to me, it's it's kind of like the studies on wine. I could see as many of these articles as as you would like to to send me. I'm still gonna have coffee in the morning. I don't care. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm addicted at this point. Um, but yeah, so, so to remind you guys, this is the this is a sponsor for today, Javi Coffee. So you can see it there, big on the camera. Um, and uh, and Landon had pasted the affiliate link if you guys are interested. Um, as we said at the beginning of the stream, coffee concentrate is great for if you're making um, coffee flavored desserts, if you're making a coffee martini, as Landon said. Um, and this one's pretty good. Like, I, you can't really tell from the camera, but I've drank to about down here. Um, so you'll just have to trust me on pointing right there. That's about how far I've drank. So uh, I can say it's actually pretty good. Um, it's one of the better coffee concentrates that I've tried because we do make coffee flavored desserts. So we bought some of these before and they're usually awful. Um, but this one actually isn't awful. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like tiramisu. tiramisu. Or I will say again, a coffee martini. Um, mm -hmm. Throw some chocolate in there. You got a mocha anyway. <laughs> mm, that sounds so good right now. <laughs> I it's two o'clock on a Saturday. I was about to say Wednesday. It's not a Wednesday. It's two o'clock mm -mm. on a Saturday. And I think it sounds great. <laughs> now that um, Landon doesn't have classes to teach, she doesn't know what day it is anymore. Honestly, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I, it. I am. I am. I went on vacation for a week. I came home midweek. And now I'm just like, I am so lost. <laughs> this is what the rest of the summer is going to look like. I'm so confused. <laughs> Yep. So, so if you're a coffee drinker, points in your direction for health, according yeah, to Harvard. I, currently, you are going to live longer than if you don't drink coffee. That could change in a little while, but right now, that's where we're at. Yeah, that's what the that's what the science says at the moment. It's the miracle drug. So, two to three cups of coffee in the morning, one glass of red wine at night. Life's good. There you go. Glasses of water in between those two things. <laughs> I mean, that is basically what I do, except instead of wine, I actually have um, a white claw. I'm definitely um, seltzer that's, most of the time. So that's not wine. <laughs> no, it's not. But I don't care. <laughs> a wine. That's fine. I don't drink any of those most of the days, including water. I'm purely an iced tea person. Oh, but do you sweeten your tea? Do you sweeten your tea or do you undo unsweet tea? Maybe I sweeten my tea. I'm Southern. Not really at all. No, you're not. Colorado is not Southern. <laughs> I am a sweet tea drinker. Okay. Okay. Which is not great, but that's fine. No, I actually do. I actually will do both when I drink tea. I'll drink sweet tea or unsweet tea. It really depends, you know. All right. Oh, you should get it that we can, uh, can get your cat, cat wine for a stream. Oh. Cat would love some cat wine. There you go. There's an option for your wish list that we've been talking about you should yeah, set up. I, Karen says I should set up a wish list. So mm -hmm. just know that you might have power and control over my background. I am offering yeah. that up. <laughs> I'm, I'm peer pressuring her. I'm peer pressuring her to have a, a wish list so that um, that we can send her things uh, so that she looks like, you know, better and better and better every stream as she's been so far going in that direction. Actually see my face instead of the blurry camera that I am. <laughs> 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 yeah absolutely that wall color made a huge difference okay all right so that that was our article today um so with all of that being said um landon uh tell us where we can find you you can find me at land in maine on twitter and instagram and land in reverie on tiktok even yes. though i haven't posted on there in a while uh, no but when you were posting it was really good it was I do tarot card readings. So also hit me up on Discord and or any of those social medias if you want tarot cards. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Can, where can they find you? You can find me right here on Twitch. We stream on Saturdays. That's Interstage Window. It's my show that's a conversation. So that's where we have community days. That's where I'm hanging out with Landon most of the time. Sometimes we have guests. You know, it's all kind of good, fun stuff. And then I also stream on Thursdays. That's Artistic License. Uh, 6.30, all these times are Eastern. Um, that is my solo stream where I do a little bit of whatever I want right now on that stream. We are playing Final Fantasy X. So... Um, and we're towards the end of the game, so we're actually doing side quests and things like that before we go fight Sin. So 
I'm trying to get all the celestial weapons before then. Uh, we'll see how many we actually get. But that's what we're doing right now on um, on artistic license as far as where to find me everywhere else i do everything the same way all other content creators do it there's my socials you can follow me all around any which where wherever you want um and then also landon what are we talking about next week on this show next saturday we're doing our second media episode next saturday and we're doing the shadow and bone netflix series uh and we have some spicy hot takes he will be talking about love interest with villains and several other things so if you would like to tune in and watch the show along with us go ahead and watch it before next saturday and we uh we will participate in the discussion uh talking about the relevancy of uh this show and what it means to as a netflix show and also to us as a whole yeah absolutely so we're really excited about that. So y'all come watch. If you care about spoilers, yeah. <laughs> if you care about spoilers, please go ahead and watch the show before the stream because there will be spoilers if you do not. It's not spoiler free. It's not a spoiler free analysis. <laughs> All right. Let's find somebody to raid, y'all. Let's find somebody to raid. Okay. It doesn't look like any of my friends are online right now. Landon, are any of your Twitch friends online? No, none of my friends are online. Okay, okay. Um, let me see if anybody from the Wolves Den is on. Um, doesn't it doesn't look like they are. Okay. Oh, Thumper, yeah, do a guide the raid then, please, and put in your art friend's name and we'll raid one of your art friends. Thumper's gonna guide the raid, y'all. Thumper always has really good, um, good art friend streams. Like, um, who was the one, the, that first one that we rated, um, Charmy, I think was her name. Uh, I oh, still go watch her stream her. quite a lot. She's so nice and positive. Knock oh, yeah. smash. Okay. Knock smash. Knock smash. All right. So that countdown is going right now. We're going to go raid knock smash and see some arts. All right, y'all. Thank you guys so much for joining us. I will see y'all all next week. And, um, and don't forget to make it a great day. Don't forget to be awesome. Bye. All right. Bye, y'all.